Okay, uh, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to go from assembled claw to explosion claw uh, and how to uh, put it on a layout page to hand it in. What you need to do at some point, uh, either when you hand in the explosion or before you hand in the explosion, is you have to show me your claw working, like in person. You're going to call me over to your computer. You're going to say, Mrs. Dion, done the claw. I want to show you. And this is what I'm looking for. So when I grab the claw, this gear should mesh with this one, and the axle shaft should turn in sync. And that's what I'm looking for. Any questions about that? Yes? If it's not working by Friday, can you still turn in? If it's not working by Friday, can you still hand in the explosion? Yeah. Yes, and then you can just work on your pick away at your claw after the break. That's fine. Um, try your best. So there's that. Yes, sir, question? The, the motor hole thing here? No, that doesn't need to move. Because it's actually constrained inside and you can't get it to move, so that's okay. So the, oh, this is what I'm looking for. I'm looking at these claws. I'm also looking that it looks normal. So like the claws should be evenly spaced. It would be nice if the gears mesh, but if they don't kind of like this, that's okay. Not a big deal. You can see that this is defying the laws of physics and intersecting because inventor doesn't follow the laws of this planet. Um, any other questions before we move on? Okay, so this is done and it's saved. And then now we need to move on to our explosion not involving dynamite, Stephen. So, we go here to a new assignment. You need to make sure you're in the correct unit. So I've opened the assembly in metric, so I'm going to go into metric. And then at the bottom, there's a category called presentation. Create an exploded projection of an assembly. It's a special kind of file that is just for explosions. And within that, we're going to open the standard millimeter IPN. You see a, th a theme here. When we're opening things, it's like standard millimeter. It's generally not standard DIN. So we're going to open the standard millimeter, create, wait a little bit because it takes a second to think, and immediately it's going to prompt you and ask, what do you want to explode? So your response should be the claw that I made, not the claw that Mrs. D gave me to look at. So make sure when you're scrolling through, you're looking for the one that you actually made. Now, I haven't made one, so I'm going to open the one that I gave you for the example. So let's group for assembly here, open, and then this is it. This is the thing. It's here. So now I have to explode it. So to do that, you're going to kind of methodically take it apart. If you want to create a video, none of you have yet, to my knowledge. If you want to create a video and that's something that interests you, um, I can indicate that as we go. To do this, to take this apart in a methodical kind of way, um, you're going to use the tweak components command. So that's where you click three components, you grab the part, you pull it, and it pulls it apart. Now, if you want to make the video, this is the kind of key, key feature here, where it says duration, 2.5 seconds. If you create a video, and every part takes two and a half seconds to move, it's going to be moving at a snail's pace, and you're going to get really bored watching that video. So I would suggest if you are going to make the disassembly video, um, you would change this to a half second, 0.5, or even 0.25 of a second, and it disassembles really quickly. So at that point, uh, you're going to look at the parts and you're going to decide what you want to take apart first. So you might want to start like on the uppermost layer, maybe start by grabbing the fasteners and taking them. So you grab the fastener, you can literally just grab it and pull it. Uh, you can pull it in the arrows direction, you can pull it in a plane direction, it doesn't really matter. But the fastener, oh I can't. Why can't I do this? Because this is the, I'm moving the claw, that's why. I'm going to move this. This thing. Okay, so I'm going to grab this. I'm going to grab this. I'm going to move them. These are some pieces here. I also want to move these standoffs. But as you see, as I move them, they start to intersect with other things. So you got to make sure that you still keep this kind of like cohesive. Um, and yet we're not, no, not moving them together. I want to move them separately. Tweak components. Um, so as it's going, it's going to make these little trails that show you how the thing came apart. Uh, you want to pull the claws apart. The only thing you don't, you don't need to pull the motor apart because I gave it to you assembled. So it can stay assembled. You don't have to pull it apart. So you can like click, click multiple parts of it and like pull it apart as like in unison and that's totally fine. So once you're satisfied with how far you've pulled it apart, I'm not satisfied with this. This isn't enough. But you're going to be sitting here for like 40 minutes watching me pull it apart and we're not going to do that. So once you're satisfied with how much it's pulled apart, uh, then you're done. You're absolutely done. And what you're going to see, if you scroll back, is you can see your little video. We can play it. 
and you can see it pulls this and then I pull those things and then Jake's your uncle and it's done. Um, and it shows you it exploded at the end or this return to the front. So we'll go back here. Now that you're done and you're happy with the view, you're going to orient this so you can, you're happy when you can see where everything came apart. So like maybe it's something like this and you can see all the parts and they're all splayed really nicely. Um, what you're going to do is you're, at this point you're going to make a snapshot view. So you can snap and maybe you want another one just because, just in case you don't like it. Like maybe, I don't know, let's rotate it. Maybe you want to do something like this, and you really like this one, you want to take another snapshot view. Maybe you want to take a few to have options. That's okay. So as soon as you're done, you're going to save this, and I'm going to call it Share Gripper Assembly. Okay, yeah, sure, override it. Give it a second to think. <clears throat> And more seconds to think. And once it's done, this is when you can go to put it onto a layout. This is where it crashed last time in the video, so I'm hoping it doesn't this time. Come on. Please don't crash. I'm going to try to override it for a second. Please respond. Please don't not respond. Perfect. Okay. So it's saved. Uh, just go crash the computer, but that's okay. Uh, and so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open a presentation file. You've done this before a number of times. This is the piece of paper that has the title block that you put your drawings into. You should know how to do this. So we're going to go to File, uh, New, and then still in metric, we're going to do a drawing file an ANSI millimeter IDW like we've done, create, you know the drill, you got to change the sheet size because it's too big, so we edit the sheet, change it to an A size sheet, okay, you can edit your title block, you can do that by going into field text and like editing, right, so just a reminder, you go into summary, you change the words up here, press O, change O, done, uh, and now we're going to put the exploded claw in, so to do that we're going to put in our base view, and your base view, it should kind of link to what you have open still. So here I should have an option between my view 1 and my view 2. And I can decide at this point what I want to do. 1, it's defaulted to scale 1 to 4. That seems to be quite small. Um, your claw should take up about half of the page. So let's try 1 to 2. See how that looks? It looks a little small. Let's try 1 to 1. It's a little big. Uh, maybe 1 to 1 and a half. That looks about good. So this takes about half of the page up. And then I'm going to go OK, and that should automatically refresh my title block to have one to one and a half. And then I can see my explosion. Again, star, 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 note, this is not fully exploded. I pulled like four parts off of it. Don't hand this in, please. Um, the next thing we need to do is we need to put a parts list on here. Uh, so that you're going to find in your annotate tab, and it's called parts list. You, it's the first thing it asks you to do is select a view, so you click this view that you just did, then it's asking you to select the parts, so you just highlight everything, draw a box around it, oh no, no it's not, it's not asking you to select the parts, select the view, never mind, pretend like I never said that, um, select the view I did, left, okay, and then it makes a table for me, um, and I can reshape my table to fit down here, and you'll notice it's telling me that I have all of these parts, uh, what you'll notice, and this is where I can tell if you've cheated, is it says you have a gripper subassembly. And you're not supposed to have gripper subassembly. You were supposed to make that. So this is where I automatically will not pass you on this assignment because I know that you didn't put the clock together as you were supposed to, um, and you're going to have to redo it. So please don't cheat because I know when you're cheating. Um, the next thing you're going to notice is that there's this description category that seems to be useless because there's only one thing with the description and it feels like it's just taking up a whole bunch of space on your page. So you can change that. I double click your title or your uh, parts list and then the first button is called column chooser. So you select that and then we want to get rid of the description column. So I click description and I remove it and I go OK, apply, OK, and now my parts list is shrunk down to have item quantity and part number and that's plenty. The next thing we need to do is we need to know which parts on here are these parts. So we have to put in balloons, which is up next to the parts list, and we're going to select auto balloon. And this is where I was giving bad instructions in the last part, but good instructions now. So select the view, it's this one, and 
the add or remove components, this is where you have to select everything. Um, so I've done both of those things. And then select placement. So I want to select placement and I want it to be around. I don't want it to be all in a line like this that looks ridiculous. I don't want that. I want it to be around, like in a circle. So I can kind of select, don't worry too much where things are located because we can move them. And then click when you're happy. And then apply. And then you get these like really cool bubbles. Hey. Um, you can change the spacing as well. So if you want the words to be further away, you can do that. Um, these bubbles you can move manually. So like some of them are cutting through the object but don't really make a lot of sense. You can move them around as necessary. So when you're happy, this is done. Your parts list is done. Your title block is done. Now you save it and then you export as a PDF and you hand it in. This is what you're going to hand in for your CLAW assignment. You're going to hand in this and you're going to show me your CLAW working on your computer. Questions for me? Nope. Okay, don't